The next topic that I'd like to talk about is about the environmental crisis. Now, this is a topic, this is a topic, ladies and gentlemen, that never wins me fans. I absolutely guarantee that talking about this topic means that I'm going to get slagged off in the comment section by my own supporters, by people who otherwise back me up. But they're going to slag me off for this because I want to talk about the environmental crisis. So, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence of an environmental crisis is beyond dispute. It is beyond dispute. The fact that we have recorded some of the highest temperatures that we have ever recorded is not a debatable point. The fact of deforestation across the world and desertification, as we're seeing in California, is not a debatable point. The fact of the collapse of biodiversity is not a debatable point. These things are well-established facts and they are established by numerous independent research into those topics. Sir David Attenborough, a man with whom I would disagree with nearly all of his politics, nearly all of his politics I would disagree with, is a man who uniquely in history has travelled about and seen more of the environmental world than any other human being in history. I think I could reasonably argue that that is also a fact. He studied it as an academic. He's witnessed it firsthand. The destruction of the rainforests in Borneo, the destruction of the rainforests in Brazil, the fact that we are discovering plastic in the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. You are an idiot if you deny the evidence. A bit like the Dawa team who deny the evidence. The evidence is overwhelming. We are in an environmental crisis. And it's not something that we can simply ignore. Now, yes, as Christians, there are many things that we should be engaging with. But as Christians, we also should be engaging honestly with the question of the environment. The question of the environmental crisis has been tied up with many other left-wing agendas. And it needs to be separated from those left-wing agendas. Because it's precisely because it's been connected to other left-wing politics that people from the right wing wash their hands of it. And we, as people who are consciously Christian, conservative, who sit on the right wing of the spectrum of politics, should be claiming this issue as our own. If our current trends continue, and there is no reason to think that they must, we will reach a point where we cannot turn back and there is the possibility of runaway global warming. Macron recently said that they would pay Brazil to stop deforestation. I would say it's time for Europe to reforest. It's time for human beings to accept that God in the garden created us to live in an order as its crown, as its cultivator. The story of Genesis, and I'm going to lower my voice because there's fewer of you, so feel free to come in a bit. Feel free to come in a bit. The, or the story of Genesis is that man was meant to cultivate the world and to fill it with life. But because of sin, man, as he has filled the world, has filled it with increasingly death. And so as Christians, part of the redemptive act of Christ is that we rediscover 
our place in the natural order. That we discover that our purpose is to cultivate the garden. And the garden is the earth. To cultivate it and to fill it with life. That means that we have to change lots of what we do. Lots of what we did in the past, we did in ignorance. But because of better learning, overwhelming evidence, there's a clear case for Christians to be involved in the cause of defending the environment. And that means things like arguing for the reforestation of Europe, cultivating biodiversity, reducing the amount of meat that you eat, not saying become a vegetarian or a vegan, but it takes more land to feed a cow than it does to grow a crop of wheat or other kinds of vegetable-based food. And vegetable-based food is healthier for you anyway. Christians, we can't ignore this environmental crisis. We have to get involved. It's kingdom work to get involved. Arguing for reforestation, the reduction of meat consumption, the defense of territories in the ocean where fishing is prohibited will lead to those fishing stocks spilling out into other areas of the ocean that can then be fished. So it doesn't mean giving up fish, it just means accepting that you eat fish far less regularly. Biodiversity is something that we need to protect actively. It's part of the commission of Genesis. It's what we should be doing as Christians. It's part of kingdom work. But that means that we who sit on the right of spectrum need to own the environmental question without adopting other left-wing agendas so that we see fighting against abortion and fighting against environmental destruction as part of the same thing. But it means that we have to rethink a lot of things. So if we have less children, we'll have less impact on the environment? No. Let me explain why not. Because a consumer and I'm really going to pickle everybody's bones here, both left, side, left and right. Move in, guys, so I don't have to project my voice as much. So, guys, guys, so in terms of the environment, one consumer in the West consumes more than seven or eight Africans. One consumer in Europe consumes more in terms, one second, bro more in natural resources than a family of Africans. What it means, ladies and gentlemen, is why is the left supporting uncensored, unfiltered immigration? By bringing in mass immigrants to the West, you're increasing the number of consumers in the West. And thus you are actually destroying the environment you want to protect. So there you have an environmental argument against mass immigration. As long as they stay in Africa, they can breed as much as they want. No. Well, one second. The next quiet thing. We Christians. You, yes, and yes, I'm coming to you, bro. I'm going one, one second. Let me finish. Let me finish addressing his point before I come to you. But it also means, Christians, that we have to discover in the West and around the world the art of dying, the art of accepting that your personal story is over, rather than clinging to life long past its meaning being gone. It is precisely because we have extended the barriers of life endlessly beyond its natural story that we have created a situation that demands more and more resources. Medicine and living older. Medicine, living older. We need to rediscover the art of dying. This younger. is not... The art of dying younger. Yes, the art of dying younger. Do you want to die younger? One second, one second. These questions are difficult and painful. 
but the environment crisis is going to force us to deal with them. And unless as Christians we speak into these questions from a Christian narrative, the abortionists and the euthanasianists are the only ones that are going to be offering an answer. We have to offer an answer to the question of global population that comes from Christian origins. The education of women around the world is essential to reducing human population without resorting to abortion and a euthanasia. What's your question, bro? The use or the balance of use of resources between Africa, let's even say a nation like Nigeria, and the United Kingdom is not 70 to 1, it's about 100 to 1. All you just have to do is look at the electricity consumption annually, about maybe 10 gigawatts, compared to the United Kingdom, compared to London. So that's. I accept my correction, and brother. Then, and then one more brother, thing. Right. One more thing please. Wait, 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 wrap up, wrap up. Okay. One more thing. Please, I hate something. You know what I hate? Thinking that the only way to handle things is either you are to the left or to the right. That's a, that's a, I think it's a brain dead approach to things. There is a Christian way. Brother, allow me to reply. No, no, no. No, 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 bro brother. Brother, one second. Okay, land, land, brother. Because There is a Christian way to handle resource management, to handle, like you said, environmental consumption of resources, to handle the distribution of finances and resources. That's the way we should do it. Okay, so I accept my correction. The brother has said that the average Londoner uses a hundred times more resources than the average Nigerian. I accept the correction, but he emphasizes the point that I'm making, which is that if you agree with that, then you don't want to bring in more consumers into the West because you're, you're increasing the burden on the environment. But that also means that we have to find a way to tackle poverty in the third world, to struggle to help the poorest in the world. Can they start using it 100 times too? No, we've basically got to... 20 times. No, let me answer your point, Steve, because it's a fair one. We basically have to reinvent life as we know it. That is post-industrial. There's nothing sacred about industrialization. Nothing. What's the, what's the alternative? The alternative is that we find a way to live in balance with nature again. By finding ways to tap into natural energy and accepting the short-term pain that in the process of getting there, that we just have to learn to live with less. Yeah, but you, you, you talk about that. There was a program, I don't know, I don't know if you watched TV, there was a program the other day called Oxford Street Revisited, and they were saying, they were showing the power Oxford Street uses, and they were saying it was so much power, they just from the top of it to the bottom, that they could, they could, they could, We'll do the whole of the whole of the UK and Scotland and all of Holland and everything at a much lower level. Yes, yeah. yeah. And that's my point, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you here are engineers? How many what? One second, one second, guys, 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 guys. JC, I'm doing a talk. No, great, guys, stop. One second. If you want to give a talk, feel free. But I am doing my own talk. That means I got to manage my own conversation. I want to reply to this guy, because he, he only emphasizes my point, which is that industrialized societies are using so much more resources than the rest of the world. There is a book, I encourage you to read it if you're a Christian. It's called Rich Christians in an Age of Hunger. Living more simply so that others might simply live. It is kingdom work to protect the environment because the story of Genesis is that man was placed on the earth to cultivate the garden and fill it with life. What we've done is we filled the earth with death and rediscovering the Genesis story as His Holiness, the Patriarch of Constantinople has argued, is an essential part of living as a Christian. This is a, a tough conversation to have but we either have it now 
or we have it when the permafrosts over Russia have defrosted and all the methane that is trapped there is released into the environment. We either have it now or we have it when the fish stocks are collapsing across the world. We either have it now or we have it when the forests are burning away. We have to change. Not changing is not an option and we have to wrestle this topic from the left wing. To address the brother's point about left wing, right wing. The reason why I'm putting it in that paradigm, brother, is because regardless of how me and you think, and I agree, it's not left wing or right wing, but most people who are listening to this video think in terms of left wing and right wing. And that is an interesting point because most people who are of a green perspective in this country do tend to be on the left. But it's an interesting point. I don't see why conservatives, people on the right, should be equally yeah. interested and concerned about... Exactly, but we've got to combine a concern for the environment that doesn't lean into or give sop to arguments for euthanasia and abortion. We have to be solidly pro-life. But solidly pro-life that deals with the question of overpopulation. Because we have rooted ourselves into every aspect of biodiversity in the environment. And we are crushing the world's environment under the weight of us. And Stanley Hauerwas, who is a Christian, argued in naming the silences that we need to rediscover the narrative of life that when your life journey has come to its end, you accept death when you are selected. Not simply fight for life for no reason. So in answer to the question, if someone who's 30 years old catches cancer, we should give them treatment because a cured 30 year old can still go on to contribute a lot to the world. But if someone and I'm not saying this has to be the number, and I'm open to debate about what the number should be. But I'm going to pluck a number out of my head. But let's say someone, let's say someone who's 75 gets cancer. We should invest in helping them approach death as painlessly and with as much dignity as possible without trying to keep them alive. And that means as Christians, we have to support the hospice movement and those that are giving dignity to those that are dying. Christianity is broader than left or right wing politics and we Christians must not be frightened to speak into any topic from a Christian perspective, whether that means we land on the left, on the center, on the right, on the extreme right or on the extreme left of politics, so long as we are working our politics from a Christian narrative. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much guys for playing by the rules. Yes, my rules, my conversation. Yes, sir. It's not the topic I was talking about, but out of respect for you, uncle, I will answer your question briefly, but I'm not entering into a debate because I want to go on to another topic. The question is, what's wrong with Islam? Here's what's wrong with Islam. Christianity teaches that as Christians, we should oppose injustice. Islam teaches injustice. So as Christians, we are mandated as disciples of Christ to fight injustice because Islam teaches injustice. We are commanded by our Lord to fight against Islam. Islam teaches injustice. That is what is wrong with Islam. I'll give you three examples. The value of the life of a Christian in law, in Islam, is worth half that of a Muslim. Muslims have practiced that legally for 1400 years. Two, the life of a Christian, if they leave Islam, is forfeit to the death. 
That's injustice. Christians cannot marry Muslim women, but Muslim men can marry Christian women. That's injustice. Islam teaches that you can own slaves and you can have sex with the slaves that you own, even if they don't want to have sex with you. That's injustice. I don't think that it is wrong to oppose that kind of ideology. If I stuck a label Nazism over that ideology, no one would have a problem with me opposing it. You only have a problem with me opposing it because the liberal do-gooder progressives have brainwashed you all into thinking you can't say anything bad about Islam because Islam is equal to Muslims and that means you're some kind of prejudice against all Muslims. That's not true. We do not accept that confiscation, that confla conflagration of those two terms. We, that conflation, sorry, of those two terms. We Christians believe there is a distinction between the sinner and the sin. You can oppose the ideology while still loving the Muslim. And if there are Muslim militants determined to impose Islam, then you have to resist them. If there are Muslims practicing Islam in a harmless way, leave them be. So, going on to my next topic. No worries, uncle, no worries.